Hey, hey, I've been waiting on you. Did you oversleep today? I'm Melissa at Safe Haven Ministries, and I just want to talk to you for a few minutes today. I'm going to share my heart with you about some things and get into some scriptures in a minute. Um, my, I'm sitting side goggling today because I've got my computer over on this side because it's reflecting in my glasses. So um, I, I want to ask a question first. Have you ever looked at somebody who's in ministry or teaching and you thought, wow, I'll tell you one thing, I'll never be like that. I, I'll never know what they know. I'll never be where they are spiritually. I, I mean, I can just tell that. Well, quite a few years ago, that was my thought. That was me. That was me asking that question. And I'd look at all these rock solid Christians and I'd think, wow, wonder what they do to get there. They know the word so well, oh my gosh. And I'd think, I got, I'd, I'd love to have a walk like that, but I don't even know how to get there. I don't even know how to start. And so, time went on. I can't, I, I even forgot that everybody starts at step one. Nobody is born ready to do what God wants. I wish I'd thought of that years earlier. It takes years of training and God chiseling off rough edges. Oh, did he ever ch chisel off rough edges on me? And still does. Things pop up all the time. I, I just think, oh, I've got that whipped, and then here it comes again. But he's still working. I am a work in progress, let me tell you. I'm a work in progress. The, th the other thing I forgot is everybody has a past. Nobody walked this walk perfectly from the time they were little. Everybody's got something they're not real crazy about in their past. I can't tell you the day or the hour that I decided I need to, I need to follow Jesus. I, I need to find out who he really is. But I can tell you where it started. It started in Jonestown. I was reading about Jonestown and, and how all these people had died from drinking the Kool-Aid because the man was deranged that led them. And I thought, God, what if somebody could lead me down the wrong road? How, how would I know the difference? How, how did they get fooled so easily? There were so many of them at Guyana, so many. And I decided something in my spirit changed, and I thought, i got to find out who this God is. I, I really got to find out for myself. And so I started going to special services. If somebody had a revival, I was there. It, and I had to go by myself most of the time. There wasn't anybody that really wanted to go with me too much. And Jerry was usually busy. And, and I, and I, but I went anyway. I thought, I need to know more about this God. And I was in every denomination. I mean, I didn't draw a line. I thought, I don't, as long as Jesus is there, that's all I care about. I learned so much in those things. And I saw God moving in ways I'd never seen before. And, and as a matter of fact, that's where one of the gifts that, one of the things he did in, in that service, I still remember it, is I was sitting in my chair and I look over and I see somebody with a light over their head. And I thought, you have a call on them. It was as clear, I knew it. It was something that I knew. And, and from that time on, every once in a while, I'll be out talking with someone in, in the class or, or see someone walk in and they've got that light over their head and I know that God's telling me, I got my hand on them, I, they're mine. I, uh, I, I don't know what God has in store for me, but I, did, I, I was after him, I chased after him, I'd read the Bible. I can feel myself growing inch by inch. And, and I, looking back, I know he put me with the right people at the right time in the right place. And, and, and all of them, all of them were instrumental in creating the Melissa that you see today. Not the one I left behind. I found out the more I sat with God and let my mind think on the word of God, the more he started to speak to me and through his word and through people. Let me read something to you. The first one that one day, I just read in the book, I was in uh, Psalms chapter 78, verses 70 to 72. And this is what it said. He chose David, his servant, and took him from the sheepfolds, from following the ewes that were great with young, and he brought them him to feed Jacob his people and Israel his inheritance. 
and he fed them according to the to his heart, the integrity of his heart and guided them by the skillfulness of his hands. What I'm about to tell you has happened, I believe, only once in my life. I've never had it happen again. As I looked at the Bible and blinked, I looked again, and the words had changed on my page. I mean, completely changed, those two verses. And it read something totally different. I, I've never had that happen before. And I read it, and it said this, God chose Melissa, not David, Melissa. And it said his servant, and he took her from the strongholds, from following the bondages that were great with young, brought, God brought her to feed his people. So she fed them according to the integrity of her heart and guided them with the skillfulness of her hands. I was speechless. And I kept thinking, how did that happen? And I kept looking at the Bible and I thought, how did that happen? I'd flip the pages over and I went back and it was still that way. So I rewrote it in my Bible. I wrote it above so I would have it. I was speechless about several things. Number one, he talked to me in a way he never had before. And number two, I knew I had strongholds, so many lies from the devil in my head and I was buying into them and, and they were strongholds. I just didn't know everybody else knew it. Well, I guess it was just him, but he knew it. Maybe others too. And he talked about bondages that were getting ready to multiply. And I thought, Lord, I'm a mess. What are you talking to me for? And then he said, I'd feed these people. And I thought, have you lost your mind? I don't know the word of God the way these preachers do and teachers. I don't know that. And then he said, I had integrity of heart. And I thought, okay, he's looking at somebody else here because I don't even know what that means. It can't be me. And the other thing he said was that, uh, I know, I, I remember thinking, <laughs> I remember thinking, you know, maybe this is when he's calling those things that are not as though they are, because this sure doesn't make a lick of sense to me. I thought about it for several years. I did. And I couldn't imagine that God, had, what God had planned. On February the 4th, 26th, 2004, Kurt Matthews, a pastor in Odin, good friend, called me on the phone and he asked if I'd been praying about God opening doors outside the church. Now, this was before I did the Wayne County Press and before I did Facebook and before I did, you know, there, before I did a lot of the things I'm doing outside the church. And, and he said, for a year, he believed God was showing him that I'd be outside the church. But recently, the impression was so strong. He said, God will be opening doors for those who walk in, get this, integrity of heart. And I thought, integrity of heart? Hey, hey. And I got my Bible out and I looked and I thought, that's me. That's me. Those were the very words that God had used in the Bible to talk to me. And the more I sat with it, I got so excited over that. And and I I even looked, I looked up the word integrity. I didn't even know what it meant. Hello, this is me here. Here's what it said. Biblical virtue of integrity is when you're consistent, your inside and your outside match. They're balanced. And I've been praying for that. Balance me inside, outside. What you get, see is what you get. And then it said your beliefs and your behavior match, your words and your ways match, your attitudes and your action. You want to know something? I still, I still think God's calling those things that are not as though they are. Because I'm sure not perfect. But my prayer is, Lord, let me walk in integrity every day of my life. Here's a scripture for you. The integrity of the upright will guide them, but the crookedness of the treacherous will destroy them. There's also one in Proverbs 10, 9. You look it up for yourself. Psalms 41, 11, and 12. You look it up for yourself. Make yourself useful today. I just, I want to end with prayer. I hope you enjoyed that today. This is what God can do in your life. Father, in the name of Jesus, Thank you for helping me remember that. It was a blessing then, and it was a blessing to repeat it, Lord. And thank you that you're still working on me. And Father, for the ones that you're working on right now out there, let them know they can grow by leaps and bounds. In Jesus' name, amen. Amen. God bless.